Hi, I'm Andy Wynn. I'm here with uh, Maurice Van Tol. Maurice is the uh, CTO of Johnson Matthey, the 14 billion pound uh, industrial giant, part of the FTSE 100 on the London Stock Exchange. And, and we're here talking about how to manage a business to unlock innovation. So welcome, Maurice. Great pleasure to be here, Andy. Thank you. Um, you know, Maurice, we, we, we've um, talked a number of times, so I know, I know a little about your career. I know you've held a number of senior technology and business roles in various um, other large corporations. I know you started in uh, DSM um, and then in the Barialis Group and now CTO in JM. And, yeah, correct. And, and so from our discussions, I know, like myself, you, you've seen technology and innovation from both sides of the fence. So from one point of view of, of having responsibility to create new technologies and products, but also uh, at other times responsibility to deliver them to market and, and grow business. Um, so you must have faced many challenges and situations along that way uh, that have hel helped you to learn how best to manage a business to allow innovation to flourish and to add value. Yeah, of course, uh, like, like yourself. We all realize when you're in this profession, innovation is, is not for the faint hearted. It's uh, mm. because it's just difficult to bring new things to the market, new technology platforms, new products. Many will fail. Mm. Many ideas will not make it to the market. And if you then get all depressed, then you will not do an awful lot better next time. It's much mm -hmm. better to then think about it and uh, reflect a little bit and try to find every time new ways of getting innovation to the next level. Um, and uh, that's a little bit how I do it. And it's also experimenting, being courageous to experiment with new approaches yeah. and then, you know, find a kind of a secret recipe that works for you. Also recognizing the different culture, the different company you, you work for. Yeah, it's hard work. You need to have a lot of passion in this uh, in this profession and I, that's why i always enjoy talking to you Maurice, because i i feel the passion i feel the passion um i, I know also that you share uh, we share a belief that managing a business and managing innovation in particular requires a, a a practical a focused and a disciplined approach and and that's what we've talked before about we collaborate collaborated together in um uh, there was a section in my last book cracking the innovation code and, and I know that you have, you've kind of developed this, this five point approach uh, to, to summarize it. And so I know that many business leaders out there would, would gain value from listening to these five points. I know, I know I have. So I, I know your first point is about leadership, isn't it, Maurice? Yeah, it's, uh, I always call it the tone from the top. It's about the CEO and the CTO teaming up and radiating the same message that innovation technology is important. And then of course, also walk the talk and help the implementation of new ideas all the way through the market together. And maybe as an icebreaker, a short anecdote, when I uh, was this young R&D um, uh, person joining uh, my first company, you have all these introductory meetings with senior leadership and one senior businessman, very successful already at a very young age, he gave a presentation and he said, you know, why marketing sales is so important in the business and why legal is so important, the finance. And, and then he came to R&D and he said, well, you know, R&D for me is driving a Mercedes out of the window every day. So that was uh, very interesting to, to hear as a young R&D talent. And uh, believe it or not, years later, uh, I'm in front of my first VP job, VP of R&D and innovation in yeah. his business. And I work with him when I uh, ran some businesses with him, for him. So in the commercial side of things, but then he asked me to do this job. And I said, listen, you know, I remember what you said when I just joined the company, you gave this presentation and I, and I, and I talked about it with him. And he said, yeah, I'll remember. And I'll tell you why, because I wanted to know why did you say that? And he said, listen, many of the CTOs, R&D leaders, innovation leaders I work with in my career, it was impossible for me to form a bond. Okay. Because they were techies and I was, and he was commercial and it just didn't work. Mm. And, and I had this background and I was given, I was the opportunity to also do commercial roles and, and we discussed about it. And, and that is maybe a tip that I can give to people that want to have a CTO, CIO role somewhere mm. in their career, yeah. do a stint, a, a, a reasonable 
uh, a stint in marketing and sales in the commercial side of things. You learn the language, you know how difficult it sometimes is in front of the customer um, and, and to bring new ideas, new products, mm. also extract more value out of the market. It's not very easy. So, uh, and then you can build bridges later on in your career and form this strong bond also with the CEO. So, yeah. Great anecdote. Makes me reflect on some of the things in the past for me as well. <laughs> We've all sat there in one form or another. Yeah. Um, I, I know your point number two is about working within uh, organizational structures. Yeah, that was a very good discussion you and I had. We reflected on what would be the best R&D or innovation structure. Is there something like that, organizational structure? And, and, and we came to the conclusion, I came to the conclusion, no, there isn't. I've worked in, in organizations where R&D was fully centralized, in organizations where none was central. It was all in the business units. And, and, in, and in hybrid situations where you have both corporate and business R&D. And they can all work. And reflecting upon it, it is about recognizing where are the important interfaces, learn to manage those interfaces. So interface managers, management is really very important. Mm -hmm. And also making sure that the, the, the key people in the R&D function, the innovation function, get together and form a kind of a group that has the same mission. Mm -hmm. And when that is clear and we all go for it, this organizational structure, how it's set up, doesn't matter anymore. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it makes a lot of sense. Um, and I know your point number three is around uh, project portfolios and, and the need to focus down. Yeah, when I go into uh, to a company, I, I try to learn what's the company strategy, where does the company want to go, what are the growth objectives, and how can innovation and technology contribute? That means, do I recognize in the innovation technology portfolio, is that a reflection of, uh, does it bring the company, will it bring the company where it wants to go? Sure. And um, so that's where it starts. Um, in many companies where technology is very important, there is so much talent. I see it at Johnson Matthew. It's unbelievable what kind of technical talent we have. Mm -hmm. So there is almost no problem you couldn't tackle and no competence you couldn't excel in. Maybe. But of course, then you dilute your resources mm -hmm. if you don't focus. So what we try to do here is really make sure to, to spend time on defining what are the winning technology platforms that bring Johnson Matty, the company you work for, to that next level. And I think that focus is really important. And there's companies that even go so far that they have selected one or two competences or technology uh, platforms yeah. for a multi-billion business. And they've said, we only do those two, but we do them really well, really, really well. And we build thousands of products based on those technologies. But, and, and they're very successful for a very long time, sometimes hundreds of years. So that means yeah. uh, it's hard to focus because there's so much you can do. Yeah, yeah. It's so essential that you focus so that you can go for it. Yeah, and I, I know you're that, that um, focusing on the portfolio um, to a limited number of projects. That, that moves into your point number four. And, I, and there's this phrase that uh, you taught me. It was, um, what was it? Relentless discipline and execution. Yes, relentless discipline and execution. Why is that important, I believe? Once you have made the selection for a relatively small number of technologies or products you want to, platforms you want to develop, you better make sure you give them all you got to make sure that they are successful uh, because you don't have many in reserve, so to speak. Um, so in that sense, what I try to do is no matter what the organizational structure is, even if a technology platform is only important for one business unit, yeah. but it will be so big from a turnover operate, or operating profit point of view for the company, that we set up a steering committee that exists, uh, consists of senior executives, not only from that business unit, but from all throughout the company. Either they're selected either because they are good challenges, helpful challenges, or that on the customer side, they, they work with OEMs where also this platform could be deployed and, and you wanna learn how to work together in the piloting phase with such a prospect, for example, or a senior executive leading a function where you know, uh, it can be intellectual property, it can be legal, whatever, where there could be some struggles where you say, I want to have the top woman or man in my steering committee 
to make sure that you can help remove the hurdles. A bit the oil in the machine is yeah. the main function of the steerco. So that means also that the third thing that I then do is, you know, program management and project management is a profession. You cannot give these very important programs to just anyone who's available. It is you, you, in particular for those key technology programs yeah. where that are so important, crucial for the future of the company, you need to make appointments of people that are very courageous, for example, have a broad background, can build bridges, good EQ, but also that they are very courageous because they need to go to the steering committee and ask for help or say in your function, the collaboration doesn't work. I don't get the right priority, resource quality, whatever it is. They need to dare to speak up in front of all the senior executives. And that takes a lot of courage. Mm. So the quality of your program manager is, is, is really very important as well. And then you can drive the, uh, the, the development of your technology, of your application, whatever you're developing, you can drive it forward with sufficient resources and drive. Mm. And, you know, with help throughout the organization, removing mm. the hurdles when they appear. And I think your, your point on the importance of project or program managers brings us nicely into point five, which is about accountability. Yeah, accountability for innovation delivery or the return on innovation of a company, I think needs to be crystal clear. Mm -hmm. So um, what I like is I always say when there is a success in a project or a program, go to the project and program manager and celebrate with the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, some, when, when, when there are some difficulties or yeah, of whatever kind, I think it's also important, for example, for the board of a company that they know where to go to, who is in the end accountable for innovation delivery. And in, in, in the case of Johnson Methy, that is me, and that is just helpful because I can then try to help uh, remove hurdles, adjust whatever it is throughout the company. Um, and, and they all know where to go to when, when, when things are, are, are tougher. Yeah, or when there is remarks, how to improve kind of things. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also very nice to uh, probably essential in a technology firm to have the technology function represented in the uh, top team, in the executive committee, uh, because in a technology company, people want to see, you know, that someone's taking care of the technology profession, the career ladders and what have you, the opportunities uh, in the company for, for technology. When technology is really important in the company, you should see that reflected in the top team. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, that, that's fantastic, Maurits. When, whenever I listen to your, your top five uh, practical approach, it always, uh, it, it always makes me reflect about my own career in innovation and, and business. Uh, and it has certainly helped me uh, since we've spoken about it. And it, it's made me think about some of the work we do in TTIP with businesses around the world. And I, I'm, I'm very sure that there's a lot of business leaders in lots of diverse sectors who, who will gain um, a lot from your experiences and your approach and, and have, take a lot of value from that. So thank you for your time. Thank you for speaking to us, Marius. It was a pleasure, uh, Andy. Thank you.